Hi, so um, today we're going to talk about um, metabolic programming and um, trying to uh, bring in Tom to have him talk about his experiences. Um, let's see. I'm going to try to do that. That's not how you do it. Okay. All right. Let's see. Bring them on camera. Bring Tom on camera. Add. Okay. We're adding you, Tom. Oh, there he is. And this <laughs> technology is a wonderful thing. So, That's crazy. So yeah, isn't that isn't that neat? So we're both sitting in our living rooms talking to each other on Facebook, and so. <laughs> but the point of bringing you on was for you to talk about the different experiences that you've had over the last couple of weeks in terms of um, this wife. Okay, no, never mind. Um, to of <clears throat> what you experienced going through some of the stuff that we implemented and um just a little bit of history do you mind if i share your details yeah go right ahead okay so tom um had suspicions that like with many people that there were some things going on um what we did was we ordered some blood work um some lab tests and um the fasting insulin test that we talk about so much the a1c test and the A1C test was the one you were concerned about, I think, or that was the video that you had seen that kind of motivated you to take action, I think, right? Was said. It actually was a conversation that I had with you regarding um, diabetes and um, uh, just basically that I had had con some concerns. Uh, my, my doctor had previously said that uh, I was pre-diabetic. Right. And so just so many people, 100 million people are sitting exactly where you were, you know, a hundred million, it's just a lot of people. But so the blood work we did, did not indicate pre-diabetes. It indicated you were type two diabetic essentially. And, yes. and so what you did was you decided, we were talking about, you know, a program and starting to um, do, do things and make some changes. And you elected to, to jump in big time and start off with, um, a five day water fast. And um, yeah, originally you were thinking maybe it would be seven days, but uh, <laughs> I, I kind of said, I said five would be perfect. Um, so just tell me about that and how that shook out for you. Yeah, I, I think I was, uh, I don't know, a little ahead of myself, I guess, where, where that was concerned, thinking that I could go seven days, no big deal, right? Because uh, I, I thought, like, I, I had quit smoking cold turkey, so I. <laughs> I had some, uh, you know, the ability to, to, to do that. But um, uh, basically, we, we stopped at five days because it was time. Um, yeah. And it was a rough, it was a rough five days. I, I wrote about it on your, on your yeah, Facebook absolutely. page. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. But, um, the, you know, there was, a, there was a lot of hunger initially. There was, um, uh, and on day three, it was kind of rough. But um, I, I guess I was a lot sicker than, than maybe either of us thought that right. we were. I mean, I wasn't physically sick. I wasn't getting sick. I didn't really get sick, you know, during the seasons very much at all. But um, when uh, when the fat started releasing the toxins that it was storing, I, I got very, very sick on, yeah. on Wednesday. Yeah, you but were detoxing Thursday, pretty hard. Yeah. And, yeah, and but, then uh, you've you subsequently fasted and it's not been as bad. No, the second one I did it, what was it, five weeks, four weeks afterward? Yeah, yeah, um, like four or six weeks it, or something like that, yeah. Honestly, comparatively, it was a breeze. Yeah. I, I was thrilled to death to eat um, Friday night when I was when I was right. breaking the fast. The big difference but, um, between the two fasts, the interval that exists between the two fasts was, fast number one, you were diabetic. Fast number two, you weren't. And so your metabolism had changed that much in that fast six week interval so like initially you were hitting sugars in the 250s 
And now yeah. what, what's a high sugar for you now? Um, uh, the last couple of days I was 92, 95. And then um, this morning I was 112. So you're, you're basically in terms of medically looking at you, you're fully recovered. And um, we're going to do our 90 day blood work here at the end of this month mm -hmm. to see where you are. Um, how much weight did you lose? Uh, this morning, I was 30 pounds lighter when I weighed 30 myself. 30 pounds. When we started, yeah. Okay, so 30 pounds. We didn't even start any supplements till maybe, what, four or six weeks or so ago? About, yeah, about midway. Yeah, so yeah. you did all of this just by changing. First, you did a fast, which is, is just so powerful. Um, and people are probably tired of me talking about it. I talk about it too much. <laughs> But it's just so powerful to just stop eating, you know, stop eating for a while and let your body heal. And so you fell into this group of people who are walking around, plowing through their days, probably not feeling super good, but and thinking something's wrong or being concerned about something's wrong, but not knowing exactly what to do. And so we look at that. We look at the a, a slightly different way of looking at these same numbers with the addition of the insulin test changes the entire dynamic because we can definitively say, okay, Tom, this right now is a, is a condition that we need to act on. Not, oh, maybe you should do something about that, but let's do it now. And so you diving in, um, if everybody did that, we would have such an enormous change of metabolisms and such an enormous effect on society and this condition, but they don't. So they think they're going to do all the same things that they normally do, but they're just going to take medication. And so you accomplish this with zero medication. I mean, you, yeah. nothing, no diabetic, no insulin, no metformin, nothing. And um, it's a perfect example. And that part of the reason I wanted you to come on here is because just this, just to let people know that this is a real thing that this, this thing, you know, no drugs changed her life. And, you know, what are we talking about? Like less than 90 days, um, a yeah. pretty significant thing. And so uh, one of the other things I thought was cool about your story was that you noticed your vision changed. And um, maybe you could talk a little bit about some of the things that you noticed with your vision. Um, after the, after the first five day fast, um, I was in church on Sunday and I was wearing my glasses and I was looking up at the, the screens where the words were to sing songs. And I was realizing that I couldn't read it and I'm looking around and I don't, I'm not recognizing anybody's faces because everything was blurry. I took them off and I was like, what is going on? Right. So it's been, I don't know, what, seven weeks now. Um, the vision has changed. It's gone sort of back to normal, but my prescription still doesn't work. I, my, my vision is still significantly better. Um, it was weird because uh, I, I had difficulty far and and um, and I could I could read everything like near but but it reversed so and now both are better yeah um, so I, I it, it it was impossible to to understand except for the way that you described about the the sugar attaching itself to the hemoglobin molecules and uh, not being able to get to the you know the the smaller yeah, and it, just, it just changes the the actual the dynamics of the even the fluid in your eye changes because of the concentration of, you know, insulin nutrients and all those other things. You know, it's profound. The same thing happens to an extent with your blood supply. So um, I know that um, you still are using blood pressure medication, but I'm reasonably certain that if you continue to do the things that you're doing, that you'll probably not need that at a point. If as long as your metabolism stays pretty normal. Um, it's my intention to uh, seeing the, the results so far, the energy level that I have is completely different than it was before. Um, I, I still need to uh, do some uh, physical activity. Yeah, more so we, than we've, talked doing. That. we've talked about that, <laughs> you know, but everybody my age seems to get injured when they work out. I, I think I have a pretty good... They get injured when they don't you know. work out, too, though. <laughs> so they get injured getting off the couch. So, yeah, so, you, so getting, getting, getting to the gym is definitely on our list of things that we want you to do. Even Certainly. if it's not real intense exercise. Even if it's just moving around 
more more than what you're already moving around because the number one glucose disposal agent on earth is exercise and and people say and doctors will say if you could put exercise in a pill um it would be the best pill ever made by anybody but they don't put it in a pill so you have to go and <laughs> you have to go and do it and um and so one of the things that also too is to talk about is um your diet you know lifestyle changes that have accompanied this um you're doing some intermittent fasting now and mm -hmm. um how's that working for you um it's actually it's working pretty good there there is some times when i get hungry but mm -hmm. um i think drinking water or drinking coffee or sleep you know in the evenings you know okay well i'm hungry it's time to go to bed right that, that tends to help out so um what i I went right into the um, intermittent fasting right after the uh, fast. five day fast. Yeah. So I started, um, basically what I do is I eat two meals on Saturday and Sunday and one meal Monday through Friday. And so um, that's kind of a good regimen, like a little bit of um, cyclical um, fasting. So you're eating, you know, a couple more meals on the weekends. And then during the week, you're just basically one time a day. Um, we've talked about different things as snacks, different foods and things, but the idea that somebody would eat only once a day for probably most of the people who are going to see this is, um, is strange, foreign, or they think maybe dangerous. So, um, so how did it from you being a full on type two diabetic now to eating one meal a day? I mean, how, how has that impacted you? Um, <laughs> it saved me a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, I'm definitely saving money. Um, eating eating once a day. A lot of people do think I'm crazy mm -hmm. um, for doing when they hear it. I think I did it occasionally anyway, but there was a lot of snacking in between. Right, right. Um, there was a lot of snacking. Now I don't snack. I just I just uh, wait. It's it's so much easier um, since I've been doing it. But when I first started, obviously there was some hunger, so I had to do things to distract myself. Right. But again, I'm not um, I'm not hungry to the point where I feel like I'm starving. I'm just hungry because I don't know. It's a habit. I don't know. Is, yeah, it does is. that make sense? It does. Um, I, OK, because I, mean, I mean, I just want to eat because I'm I got nothing else to do. I think, right. And that's that's a, that that consumption that we all do. Like if we're sitting on the couch watching TV and there's a bag of chips there, we'll I, I mean, me personally, I can eat that whole bag of chips. And, and not be hungry. I mean, just you're just eating, you know, it's not mm -hmm. even like, it's not even a conscious effort for nutrition. It's just eating. It's for entertainment. Yeah. So um, even now after I've been doing it for what nearly seven, six, seven weeks. Nine, nine, yeah, yeah, since October 29th is when I started. I remember yeah, that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even even last night, because one of the things that I do is I do snack, but it's during my one hour that I'm like, cause I, I fast for 23 hours and I eat for one. Yeah. So and when I'm done eating, I still snack a little bit and yeah. I, I, I've fallen back in love with the pistachio nut right. and macadamia nuts. Uh, I absolutely love them. Right. But um, last night I was done eating and I was just mowing down on these pistachios. And my wife looks at me and she says, what, why are you, why do you keep eating those? Yeah. I just looked up and I'm like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So I pushed them aside, but even now, after doing this for as long as I have been, it's still the habit. You know, is it's still it, something that's weird. If you had to say, on the range of being zero, being no effort at all, and ten being absolutely awful, how bad would you say this this lifestyle change is? Initially, I would say. Well, I mean, the conversation that we had when, when you and I talked about this, um, I, I was pretty motivational, even though you may not have realized it, but you pretty much my summary of it was, is that, you know, if I didn't make changes that parts of my body would fall off and I would die. So right, I, right. Know, I would prefer that not to happen. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's good initially, support. like with the after the 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 um, after the five day fast. When I started, when I started the um, intermittent fasting, like, um, so Saturday and Sunday that week weren't too bad. But when Monday came, it was rough. I would say it was probably like a six or seven. Yeah. It wasn't a 10. But now it, I would say it's a one, two. It's okay. pretty easy at this point. So you just really got to, it's like a breaking through kind right. of scenario. You grooved in. 
So just yeah. like you, you develop the habits that you have before, you can also develop other habits, you know? And so you, it takes a while. I mean, your body, mm -hmm. you know, I've been doing one meal a day off and on for a while. Um, and yeah, during the day you do get hungry, but nobody ever died of just being hungry. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, we could all probably use a little bit of it. So, um, did you, are you still checking your ketone levels? Cause that was a big thing to find out because the importance of that is aside from testing insulin directly, ketones are the, are the inverse. So when you're in ketosis, that means your insulin has dropped. When your insulin is high, you can't go into ketosis. So a simple thing that we do is we just say, okay, we're not going to take you for a blood test right now. Just test your ketones. And if you're putting off ketones, you're going to, you're very likely at a pretty low or reasonable insulin rate. So have you, have you tested that lately? Yeah, I have. Um, I'm seeing trace amounts. It's not as great as it was when uh, I'm in, um, when I'm doing the, the five day fast right. that I was doing, the, the two right. that I did, it, it was, I mean, it was pretty high. Yeah. But, um, there's trace amounts to, to like a low amount. That's um, good. I, I'm, yeah. So, it, I mean, it's there, but it, it's not um, to the high degree that it had been when and, I was and doing And one it. of the things that happens, which most people don't actually know, is that as time goes on, your body becomes more efficient at using ketones as fuel. And so you actually dispose less through waste. So if you're showing some on the stick that shows, yeah, I'm still in ketosis a little bit, a little bit is fine. That's just, that's just the process that we want. And then we know based on that information that your insulin levels are being maintained. And um, that's, that's an enormous part of this whole dynamic. So when we get our 90 day um, labs back, then we can sit down and put them side by side and say, oh, here's where we were here's where we are and there'll be you know i think a very dramatic shift 150 points of glucose would be one of the shifts um and i expect to see your insulin way low half of what it was before i like to see that number come in at five or less um and now people are getting on this like i'm reading doctors now saying oh yeah we want to get that fasting insulin down it's too high um so yeah it, it's definitely something that you know, we'll, we're going to see big changes on your labs for sure. I, I know it. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any, any parting thoughts or comments or if somebody's watching this and they may be on the fence about diving in with a program like this, what would you tell them? Um, on, I would say on the surface, it's like to me, I, <laughs> I used to eat any way that I wanted to anytime, you know, I would drink soda like crazy. Um, to me, this sounded like it was insane right. to, to do something like this, but um, to see the results that we're seeing, I mean, the fact that I've lost 30 pounds and it's only been like two and a half months. Right. I, and, and I'm really not doing anything other than changing my eating habits. Really? Right. I mean, right. um, I, I think, I mean, what can, what do you have to lose? I mean, if you're in a situation that I was, I mean, it was just a matter of time before something terrible was going to happen. Right. I mean, so I, even if you're not, even if you're a healthy person, I still think this is probably a fantastic idea. Uh, I, I'm a hundred percent behind it. Um, yeah. yeah. Everyone I talk to, I mean, I, I've invited a lot of people to your, uh, to your Facebook page. Yeah. Um, talk about it constantly. People ask me, I mean, when they see me they they can't help but notice. Right. So, I mean, I talk about it all the time. I, I tell them, look it up. I said, it's people are doing this all over the place. And yeah. it's, it's really having an effect on people's health. It is. And it, it's showing up in the medical journals. I, I have a video. I don't remember which one, but I'm showing pieces of peer reviewed um, stuff just coming out that people got off insulin, got off all their diabetic medications, just by intermittent fasting alone, without even doing the water fast that you did, which was the, an enormous catalyst to changing metabolism it, it's just um and then we we talked about maybe every six weeks or so you may be doing a little bit more of an elongated fast until you reach your target weight which how far away how where are you at where where do you want to be um i'm at 249 right now i want to be at uh, 225 okay so i mean you know a little bit you're more than half the way there 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that that's definitely obtainable, I think. And it may happen slower now because your body has lost a lot of the fat. And I have a video I'm going to do about this, but some of the fat that we lose when we change our metabolism is actually what's called visceral fat. Mm -hmm. And it's actually in and around our organs, especially our liver. Our liver gets insulin resistant. And as a result, it, it builds fat around it. And it's almost like a hormonal fat. It actually... It, it causes more insulin resistance. And when you change your metabolism, especially when you go on a fast, um, that visceral fat gets consumed and its effect on your metabolism is dramatically changed. So, um, so you might not notice like my waist got dramatically smaller, but you're, all of a sudden your metabolism worked better. And mm -hmm. that's because of the impact on that visceral fat. And um, I think that that's going to be something. And I look at the literature and I look at people, you know, doing this kind of research. And I think that's going to be something that gets talked about more in the future. Right now, nobody's really talking about it, but it's, it's visceral fat has a definite component of metabolic disease. Um, so, so that's part of what you experienced probably in the beginning was just losing a lot of that. And then seeing your sugar just kind of just, collapse to a normal level because you don't have all that insulin resistance around your liver so mm -hmm. you know and and one of the things like you were drinking a lot of soda like oh, yeah. like the fructose kind like the high fructose corn syrup ones oh i, I didn't read the labels just so you, know. <laughs> you just drank so <laughs> i was drinking uh coca-cola mountain yeah. dew pepsi yeah yeah I'm so they sure they that. have um high fructose corn syrup in them and High fructose corn syrup is as troublesome to your liver as booze is. I mean, it may be more. So when you drink this, it just hits your liver so hard and your, insul your, your liver develops insulin resistance because fructose can't go anywhere else but your liver. Whereas glucose can go in your muscles, your brain, um, all these other tissues can metabolize it. Fructose just hits your liver like a punch, like somebody mm -hmm. slugged you in the liver. And so people are guzzling this down without any understanding of that it is a very important component of getting rid of metabolic diseases, getting rid of that fructose corn syrup. So that's a neat, that's a neat um, thing just in itself is that how much that affects your body. It would be neat to have like a whole body CAT scan before and after and see, you know, what <laughs> happened inside of you. Um, but, but, you know, on the outside that a lot of things have changed. So, you know, oh, yeah. with the loss of weight and all that. So, um, and, and your head is smaller now. So it know, is it, it, it clearly it's in the screen now. That it's <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, I, I appreciate you coming on here. I, I, I think your story is fantastic. And I just wanted people to see that this is, this is doable. I mean, you know, that, you know, three months ago, you weren't doing any of this and now you're, you, you know, it's not that hard for you. So, yeah. um, and, and it's just encouragement to people out there who are sitting on the fence going, I don't know what to do and nothing ever works and blah, 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 you know, and, and listening to your story, you can't really think that way, you know, because the results are amazing. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah. All right. Well, I will see you around and uh, I appreciate you coming on. And maybe when we do our 90-day labs, we'll come back on together and have a little party as we look at our 90-day labs. Uh, I'll be happy to. Yeah, we'll, we'll drink an Arctic monkey or something like that. <laughs> Let's go fly. <laughs> All right. All right, Tom. All right. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, Doc. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.